Hi, I'm Marshall Chase. I'm a manager in advisory services at BSR. I spend a lot of my time working on conflict minerals. Conflict minerals are tin, tantalum, tungsten, and gold that are mined and traded from the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo and the surrounding region, whose mining and trade often goes to help fund armed groups in the region. These materials then make their way into global supply chains for electronics, uh, heavy manufactured goods, including jet engines engines, power plant turbines, uh, cutting tools, and a range of, of other items. This is a complex issue where it's not just about eliminating conflict-related materials from your supply chain. Uh, these, uh, the trade and mining also goes to support livelihoods for perhaps a million people in the region. Conflict minerals is going to become an increasingly urgent issue for companies as the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, issues its final rules sometime later this year and as companies try to actually act on those rules. It's important for companies to uh, get a head start on that, to understand the issue and begin addressing it now. At BSR we've worked with a range of companies on supply chain issues including conflict minerals and we've developed a process to help companies think about how to develop a strategy for supply chain issues like conflict minerals. The first step that a company should take is to develop a vision for what they want to do on the, this issue. Uh, with conflict minerals, it's not just about severing the link between conflict minerals and, and your supply chain. It's about understanding whether a company wants to manage this from a risk perspective to eliminate potential risks to company brand or supply chain, or whether the company wants to develop a leadership stance on the issue, wants to proactively support conflict-free sourcing from the Eastern DRC, for example. It's important for companies' leadership to understand what exactly its level of ambition, what exactly its interests are on this issue. Uh, it's important to have discussions internally about what the company can do, what it feels its risks are, and what it feels that, that should be the next steps for the company. Companies should start with an external landscape review where they understand what external stakeholder pressure is or potentially could be on them, understanding where the stakeholders are coming from, what their interests are, also understanding what the company's peers are doing on this issue, uh, competitors, suppliers, and customers, for example. We've been working with one company who, uh, that has been thinking about the issue from something that's broader than a pure supply chain risk management perspective. They are con very concerned about severing the link between conflict minerals and the products that they make. But at the same time, they're emphasizing that they want to have a supply chain that is conflict-free, but not DRC-free. They want to ideally find ways to proactively source uh, minerals from the region in a way that, that doesn't support conflict. One of several factors that companies should consider in their visioning is, is what regulations may look like both in the U.S. and Europe and, and potentially elsewhere and understand what the minimum the company has to do to meet those regulations but also understand what the company might want to do in addition to those regulations. There are a range of companies that have taken proactive stances on the policy front on this issue that are uh, working with government entities or publicly supporting policy positions that support greater transparency in supply chain uh, that support greater reporting on this issue and hopefully from that perspective help to create, the situ create a situation that addresses the problem. We've seen a lot of companies emphasizing uh, supply chain procurement, supply chain responsibility as the lead on this issue, but it's very important to understand that it's also a factor for government affairs, for international trade representatives, uh, for customer engagement, and so it's very important for these functions to be working together on the issue. For example, government affairs is the direct interface with uh, government policy issues. They're the ones who have to respond to regulatory pressure, for example, perhaps coming out with public statements or lobbying positions. They should understand the issue. They should understand what senior leadership on the issue wants to accomplish. Similarly, uh, if you're in customer relations, you may be facing questions from buyers about this issue, about what the company is doing on it. So it's important to be informed on what how the company is working with its suppliers, how the company it thinks about the issue overall, and to be able to communicate frankly with customers. 
once a company has a sense of what it wants to do on this issue and has worked toward internal alignment, it's important to prioritize and identify and prioritize areas of the supply chain where conflict minerals might be coming into the, the company's supply chain. This is important in a variety of ways for a variety of industries. If, if you're in the ICT industry, the information communications technology industry, you probably have hundreds or thousands of component manufacturers that are using small amounts of a variety of these conflict minerals. Whereas if you're a jewelry manufacturer, you might have a comparatively small number of suppliers and be more closely related to the source, have greater visibility into your supply chain. Well, once you have a, a basic supply chain map, once you understand where the materials likely come from, it's important to work with suppliers and uh, identify roles and responsibilities for your own company and for, for the suppliers that you have. And the, those responsibilities and roles will vary depending on, for example, if you're, if you're sourcing directly from a smell versus if you're sourcing from a component manufacturer. Um, if it's a component manufacturer, it may simply be trying to understand further down the supply chain where these materials come from. Whereas if it's a smelter, it's much more about buying the direct raw materials, the, the ore from the mines. Companies should uh, develop a sense of their priorities in their supply chain. The, uh, they should be looking at a supply chain map and identifying where the most significant opportunities for impact on the issue are or their most significant risks. Um, they should be understanding where they, the most of the tin, tantal, and tungsten or gold comes into their supply chain, whether it's uh, buying direct amounts of, of raw materials or whether it's coming in through a component manufacturer, for example. And there's a variety of ways that companies can prioritize prioritize this issue. Um, they might be able to prioritize it by the, the simple volumes of material that they're buying. Um, they might also be able to look at it from a, a brand risk perspective. So for example, if you're a company that produces branded electronics products and maybe cutting tools or something else, un unbranded materials, you might want to focus specifically on where you face the greatest reputational risk, the greatest brand risk. External engagement is a critical piece of this overall effort and happens throughout the entire process from visioning all the way through uh, supply chain mapping and prioritization through implementation and review actually of, of these efforts. But so, uh, stakeholder engagement is a, a process where companies should be looking at both their peers, competitors, um, suppliers and customers as well as at non-governmental organizations, uh, government bodies and others and identifying who the most important organizations are that the company should be working with. This is particularly effective where companies are working with their peer companies to address common supply chain issues. For example, the Electronics Industry Citizenship Coalition is working with their suppliers to address the issue. You see somewhat similar efforts in the automotive industry and other efforts beginning in, in other industries as well. Uh, some of the things we're seeing are a, a pretty common perspective among stakeholder groups that companies need to address this issue first from a supply chain perspective, they first need to get their own house in order to understand what their supply chain looks like and do their best to ensure that conflict minerals aren't in entering their own supply chain. But then take a look at the broader issue, understand that uh, there are millions of people in Central Africa whose livelihoods depend on mining and trade in minerals and do their best not to completely embargo or, or cut off the region, but find positive ways to source minerals, conflict-free minerals from Central Africa. I, I've talked about four steps in this process and we haven't reached implementation at this point. Uh, companies obviously need to do more than just thinking about the issue, understanding their supply chain and, and beginning discussions with suppliers and stakeholders. They need to actually start acting on it as well as once they start acting, reviewing performance and understanding where improvements can be made. Uh, this is an area where starting a, beginning with a review of the OECD's due diligence guidelines on uh, mineral supplies from conflict areas is a very useful resource. We have a series of materials on the BSR website that's useful for this. We have a, a report that was produced about a year ago that provides a very good background on the issue of conflict minerals prior to regulation and the, the root issues are still essentially the same. Uh, we also have a series of blog entries, white papers and, and others that uh, you should feel free to reference. It's critical for companies to be looking at this issue from a holistic and integrated perspective. It can't just be a narrow supply chain risk management issue. Uh, companies need to think of this as more than just severing the relationship between conflict minerals and their supply chain. They need to be thinking about it from the perspective of how do we support proactive conflict resourcing from the region? And ultimately, how does it 
ensure that we can get to conflict-free without it becoming Congo-free.